A very good morning to you. Welcome to my thought for the day. We are in 1 John 2, um, uh, in the verses that follow on from verse 18, when uh, John warns about the Antichrist and many Antichrists. Um, uh, this has come to be thought of as one particular person, but as John writes, um, he calls anyone who alters the basic truths of the gospel an antichrist, simply against Christ, one who speaks against Christ in one way or another. Um, and it's come in our in our thinking to be focused on one particular person who in scripture is described as one who will come in the end times and uh, try to uh, win the world against by speaking against the truths of the gospel. But anyone who alters the basic truths of the gospel could be called by John an antichrist. And this is because these three letters of John were written uh, really towards probably about 90 AD, uh, much later than any of the other writings, any of Paul's writings. Paul was unfortunately long gone to be with the Lord, and so was Peter, so were most of the other um, disciples. And John was contending here with something that had arisen um, in the church because of the teachings of uh, the Greek philosophers. Um, which said, um, the, the, the idea was that everything physical is evil um, and everything spiritual is good. Um, and therefore, uh, Jesus could not, if he was truly God and truly good, could never have really become human, become physical. Um, and that therefore, their idea was that um, Jesus came on, the, the, the Son of God came on, to the person Jesus at his baptism and left before the crucifixion because it was impossible for God to die. And this was their basic teaching. So they denied the incarnation, the truth about Jesus coming in the flesh. Um, John is quite adamant as you read, in the, as we read, that the things of the world are not things we should hold on to, that love of the world is not love of God. John is quite clear that the, the that we should not cling on to this world because we have become spiritual beings. But he does not say that everything about the world is evil, just that we mustn't cling to it. And so we have in our world many people who teach things that are not in, in Scripture. And they are little antichrists as well. Everything that distracts from the basic truths of the gospel is is working against faith in Jesus. And we have to be, as John writes to hit the people he was writing to, we have to be really, really careful that we cling on to the basic truths of the scriptures. This is one of the reasons why in, in the years that followed the church, as it moved further away in time from the actual followers of Jesus, the actual apostles, took time to sit down and write down the creedal statements, you know, the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed and the Athanasius Creed, I think it's called. Anyway, um, there were three creeds worked on by church councils over the years to put down in writing exactly what Christians should believe to be Christians. And this is one of the reasons why in many churches the creed is recited because it's a reminder to everybody of what they believe and every church should have a statement of belief so that if you come to a church we have one at Monk's Yard we have we have a statement of what our beliefs are and what our our um, um, guiding principles are um, and it's good to know what a church believes where it stands on scripture, where it stands on the Holy Spirit and his work, where it stands on who Jesus is and what he did, and where it stands on who the Father is and the Trinitarian statements. You know, I believe in God the Father, 
who created the world. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son, um, and I believe in the Holy Spirit. All these creedal statements are so important because it is so easy to absorb the ideas that are current in society and abandon the ideas that are written in Scripture. We have to hang on. We must not add anything in to that will undermine the work of God of, through Jesus. So anything that says, well, we can get through things done without reference to the cross, without reference to what Jesus did, um, has to be suspect. So John is very adamant that we have to be really, really careful. And he, in, in this letter, several times he talks about Antichrist. And this is reference to people who build up ideas and teach ideas that are not contained within the Bible um, as we have it. Um, so it is a warning to us. So beware. If you sit under somebody's teaching and they teach something that is not clearly in Scripture, be careful. We have to hang on because the enemy out there wants to distort. He wants to distract everybody and everything from the incredible saving nature of the gospel of Jesus. The gospel that was taught um, by Jesus and the gospel that was taught in the New Testament. Uh, there's lots of things that very subtle ways, some of them, to distract us and to undermine the value of what Jesus did um, and what has been done for us. So it's a warning and it's a warning. Everything, everything we hear, anyone preach has to be tested against scripture, has to be tested. Experience is not proof that something is true. Experience is not proof that something is true. If it doesn't marry up with the scriptures, if it wasn't something that they experienced in the time of, 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 of the writing of the New Testament or the Old Testament, if it, if it doesn't marry up, oh, it's a warning. We need to take heed to the warning um, uh, and, to, and, and stick, stick to the old established truths tested out. It's so important. God bless you. Have a great day. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.